Okay, folks, you know, it is time. Let's talk about single and looking. How to get ready for a happy relationship. And this um, article was written by Catherine Woodward Thomas. She has a master's degree about you being single, dating, advice, mind, body, and spirit. It's not like it used to be, folks, where we walked around ignorant. You can find information to help you from soup to nuts. This is the communication age. And I just thank God that he has me doing this research and broadcasting it for you. If you've been without a partner for a long time, now living the single life, you know sleeping in the middle of the bed, falling asleep with the TV on, taking up all the space on the counter of the bathroom, then I'm here to tell you, don't despair. Just in case you are, even a little? These single years can be an extraordinary time of growth where you can come home to the center of yourself, connect more deeply with your own feelings, needs, and desires, discover your own authentic voice, and reflect upon the impact your beliefs and assumptions have had on your past relationship and do this in a way that supports you to evolve your consciousness to a healthier place from which to create your next relationship. Yes, I know you want to know who I am. I am Reverend Dr. Catherine Weathers from Moments and Miracles Ministry. Mom, I'm a nurse and a an author of a book called Creative Living Series, Is Your Husband Not Married? Married three times and divorced. I remember my eldest son saying to me, Mommy, whatever you do, don't give up on love. And so I'm here to tell you, don't give up on love. Amen. Sometimes we are put in a position to get into a relationship or jump into a relationship before we're ready for a relationship which can cause us pain and agony. Who causes it? We cause the pain and agony on ourselves because we're not quite ready. We do not know what we want out of the relationship first. Amen. This is what we're going to discuss today to help you become a better single person so that you can, at the end of this, know how to become a better partner because partnerships start within yourself. You have to know what your needs are, what you're bringing to the table so that you can partner up with the right person. Amen. It doesn't matter what color they are. It matters what the two parties emotional needs are. Amen. In short, you actually have the time and the space right now to identify and release your internal barriers to loving partners and to prepare yourself to co-create a relationship that reflects the highest possible, highest possibility you hold of deeply nurturing, inspired, happy, healthy love. Okay? And this is true. I found this to be true. The kind of shifts that are possible in these precious times of solitude will, however, require much of you. In order to dramatically transform your relationship patterns, you must be willing to see clearly how you yourself co-create the old one. What, I, what am I talking about, co-creation? You yourself co-create the old ones. Co-creation is you thinking about all the things that happened badly in your past relationships 
and reinventing them in your mind first. Because if you can put a picture in your mind to recreate the perfect relationship for you, you know, maybe you're not tender enough, gentle enough, loving enough, caring enough, or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're too loving and caring and you need to step back and allow um, the person to take the initiative. That's recreation of yourself in a relationship in order to try to keep a new relationship. I want to take this time out to just congratulate Tyrese and his new wife, which everyone's saying she's not black enough. You know, as a black person, we have to stop putting our own people down. If she has an ounce of black blood in her, she's considered black. So the white people throw her away. We're not to throw her away. We didn't throw President Obama away. We have to learn to love ours, keep ours, cherish ours, and thank God that we can be shades of many colors. We thank Tyree for wanting a black queen who will represent a woman of substance that his daughter can learn from. And we can see this woman makes him happy. And that's the most important thing, that they make each other happy. So I pray, brothers and sisters, that we give him the honor that's due to him and his new wife. Amen. As well as take responsibility to begin showing up in completely new ways. Okay. What does this way look like? Like. A mature adult and not simply a child in a grown-up body who is holding others hostage to your old wounds from childhood or as a person who is willing to let go of your solo dance in service to becoming ready to be a part of a couple and being willing to take full responsibility for those things within yourself that you've been blaming others for. I don't know. I haven't found a lot of people mature enough to do this. And that's sad because I'm hanging around with people in their 50s. Becoming ready for authentic, happy, healthy love isn't always easy but it is always well worth the effort on the other side. While setting an intention of fine love is a good thing, it is really just the beginning of the journey. When you have the courage to say yes to the possibility of love, it will often mean facing things about yourself you've not been willing to really look at until now such as a part of you that may not actually want to be in a committed relationship, or maybe the part of you that doesn't actually want to risk being sexual again, or the part of you that doesn't want anyone else wants and needs to interfere with getting your own tended to. You want to be selfish right now, and that's okay. Using your single time as a time to prepare for love often means a radical departure from your old automatic and probably pretty comfortable way of doing things. I'm talking about those patterns and habits that may Identify who you think you are, such as I am furiously independent and never ask anyone for help, or I'm such a loving person that I always take care of other people before myself. Everything you think about yourself is suddenly suspect. Is it really your nature to be that independent? Or is it a defense against being disappointed again, like you were when you were a child? 
a creative and compensatory response to no one really ever being there for you in the way you need it when you were young. Is it really loving to self-abandon constantly and to search and to source your values from pleasing other people? Or is it a destructive pattern that keeps you invisible and makes it nearly impossible for you to ever fully commit yourself to someone else because you don't trust that your authentic self will ever be taken care of? These are excellent questions. I've asked myself these questions. This time alone grants you the ability to consciously challenge these old ways of seeing yourself and to begin identifying and practicing new ways of showing up in relationship to yourself and others that are more likely outside of who we're known yourself to be. So I encourage you to use this time widely, moving into a place of stillness for a while and getting into a deeper relationship with yourself can be the most vital and wonderful preparation for receiving a beloved into your life. If more people took advantage of this time alone, there would be a lot more healthy and happy unions we could point to as role models for what we ourselves are committed to creating. And I just want to encourage you as you doing this soul searching, being alone time, don't forget, bring God the Father in to this mix so that you can build a relationship closer to the Father. Amen. It all comes down to really doing the work to tr transform yourself from the inside out while you are still single to recreate yourself anew and to focus on becoming the best potential partner you have the capacity to be. So that when you do call in your wonderful, made for you soulmate, you'll actually be worthy of their devotion and their love. And I'm praying that people look at this video and start working on yourself.